template time. So like I said last time, you know, actually, sure, we can do a very, very brief review of templates, but really, I just want to just spend the day coding templates and uh, showing all the possible issues we might run into, because we kind of finished talking conceptually about them, but let's just very quickly review, make sure that we remember this. Might have been a long week or something. So function templates, those are the easy ones. Those are only done for functions. And what you are trying to achieve with a function template is that you're trying to make the parameters of the function basically be any type, right? Not, not connected to one type, like an integer or float, a string or a specific class. And the way you do that is you write the, the syntax of the word template, the, the greater than and less than sign, and inside you're gonna put your template variable, which we're just picking T just for fun, and then the word class, which you could also put the word type name. Both of them will do the same thing, almost. For your cases, don't worry about it, just use class, but if you use the other one, it'll work too. Someday you'll find a difference. It's it's like this ins insignificant. Okay. Um, here's an example of that. As you can see, the T is because this is a valid returning function, which you're returning that template type. So we have it bought as parameters and as a return type. So the catch with templates is that if you're doing any operations with building operators, like here we're doing the plus, it has to work for that type that you're going to be passing it. So the code may compile, like when you just code the template function. But when you're actually calling, coding the actual function calls to the templated functions, like I am doing here, then your code may not compile because you're doing it with something that's invalid. Because what's happening is at compile time, your your compiler is literally taking the type that you are that you're passing in. So in this case, two integers, and replacing the type of the template, so the T, with the with, with the real type. So like two int in there, and then it's checking if that code is still valid. If it is, you're good to go. If it's not, then you get the error that there's, there's a mismatch or that the operator does not work for certain things, right? So it does all that check at compile time. So if you ever have a function call where you're, where you're passing something in that the template thing cannot resolve or that there's an operator that doesn't work with that specific type that it's being resolved to, then you'll get the errors at compile time, which is good because that means you won't get any errors at runtime. Unlike Python, where everything is kind of templated per se, that you just pass in whatever. You never put in types in Python, like never. And so, you know, you could run into runtime errors at like literally when you're running the code, it tries to do an operation that doesn't work and then the program ends at that point. So pros and cons. Some people say it's better to get those kind of issues at compile time. Some people say YOLO it, we'll fix it. We'll, we'll fix it in production. Okay. That's, that's our function templates, and then your class templates are going to be, again, when you want to have that flexibility where a class variable is going to be allowed to be of a template type. In this case, you have the same syntax, template, class, t, blah, blah, blah. The only difference is that if you're actually, if you're, if the only difference is if you're doing, if you, uh, if you have a function that handles the template type, because, and that function is not inside of your class, because here, like your declaration, here you have your class declaration. You can put in your functions as normal. You can put in your variables as normal or as a template, like here. Uh, you could even have templated parameters and return types, as you see here. And it all looks nice because there's no template, uh, you know, keyword and whatnot. Where things get messy is when you're trying to define a function outside of a class, like you know, header file versus CPP file, things like that. There's where like the syntax is kind of messy. So you do have to put template class t blah blah blah. But furthermore. When you're putting the class name as, and you know, you put your class name scoper solution operator, there you got to put in the template variable like you see there. So it looks weird to have the A and then the T part, but that's all because of the template. Once you do that, then everything else is the same. So just remember that piece. And as a cheat sheet, I wrote this right here, which is how you are going to do that. You write the word template, class, whatever the parameter name you want to, sorry, whatever the template identifier you want to choose, which T is just what I always pick. Your return type, which could be of a template type or just a built-in type, whatever. Your class name, again, you got to put that same letter here like that. Your scope precision operator, your function name, your parameter list, and your code. So this is like a little cheat sheet for what you're doing here. Uh, if it helps, if it doesn't, then don't, don't even look at that. The only other difference is that was with function template, you just call it like a normal function and you don't even know that a template is happening. With a class object, you do because you actually have to define what that template is going to resolve to when you declare that object, when you instantiate it. So in this case, we're making three objects of class A. 
one of them is going to be the template the template type is going to be an integer the other one's going to be a num which is just some class we made up and the other one's going to be a string again you you define this now because when you're compiling the code it's going to literally take that int and it's going to plug it in everywhere it sees a t in the class so like you know it's going to be like uh int a const int ampersand b uh int get a uh void foo int g int get a2 and here it's just going to say a foo int g so it's plugging it in so that it can check whether that code would still compile if you had done it that way so it's all compile time polymorphism which is the cool fancy keyword that i use but uh yeah so that's like the that's like the five minute version of what we spent a class in okay so all right that's enough talking let's start coding all right so we have, we're having some fun last time, and I did see somebody posted a possible solution for the issue we had with the addressing. Uh, I left it here just in case we wanted to revisit it, but I mean, there's not much more to say about that other than um, when we were doing our functions, if you remember, we were having that weird issue where it was trying to add to the constant array, the four, which is doing some weird pointer arithmetic style thing. Uh, ultimately, you know, there's not more, more to really say about this, uh, but that's very cool that somebody did propose a solution for that, for getting the address, which they just did like a size of, which which is which works. Yeah, I respect that. But yeah, not much more to say about that. So let's just kind of start clean now. And of course, those were all examples of functions, right? So now we're going to do examples of classes. So. Let's start out by just making a class, and I'm going to go ahead and call this class, uh, what would be interesting? Uh, let's just call it a list. We're gonna make a templated list. It can, call, it, it can hold lists in it, okay? Uh, let's make sure a list is not reserved or something. Yeah, okay, it's not reserved. So what I'm going to do with this templated class is I'm going to, uh, actually, let's, let's make a, because because let's make a container per se. I want to call it container just because like it's gonna hold some 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 uh, some. I don't want to say a type because it could be not like you know it could be a template type. So we're gonna have like integers, floats, that was gonna have something in there. We're just gonna make a little box that contains that. Then we can actually make using composition because we'll show that example. We can make a list of these. Okay, so we'll start with just like a what I'll call a container. Okay. And what this container is going to contain is just going to be some variable. Uh, we're going to call it like data, okay? So it just contains a data object, okay? Uh, this is going to be some built-in type that we are going to pass in. Uh, so along with this, let's just do a quick accessor and getter method because that's examples of template functions. So let's just say uh, it's called void set data and then um, we pass in some parameter now this parameter is not an integer it's not a string and it's not some custom type it's the template type because we don't that's what we want that flexibility for so we'll just say TD and then uh, we will go ahead and just actually let's write the function outside so we can see that fancy syntax that we have to do so we'll do that outside and similarly for the get data uh, that one's going to just return what t contains, which is just a value returning function. Again, we can't set that to a type because we want to have flexibility, so we want to make a template. So we'll just do like that, okay? This one's just going to be return, uh, return data. But again, I want to do it outside the class because uh, I want to show you that nasty syntax for the template, okay? Uh, so I will actually make my data private since I want to make it cool and uh yeah that's 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 good enough for now so let's go ahead and uh define the two functions the get and set so you have to do this fancy syntax so it's class t uh in fact just to show you that it doesn't have to be now nah, we'll leave it as class t i don't want to confuse you 
Uh, so we'll leave it class T, and then we will do, uh, let's do the set data first. So void, and then the class name, which is called container. Scoper solution operator, but before in here, we have to put our template, so that guy, and then set data, and then the parameters, TD, and then we can just put the body, which is just literally going to be data gets D. Okay? Uh, also, I forgot, we should probably do a constructor in here, too. I also, I also want to try to do it outside, because that way you can see, again, more examples of this. So let's actually do that one really fast. So again here, I'm literally just going to copy and paste that, so I have to write it again. Uh, for the constructor, there's no type, so you just have to put in the class name, the T again, name of the, the class, because <laughs> it's a constructor, no parameter, because it's a default constructor, and then just put in the body of the constructor there. Uh, did I misspell it? Maybe we'll see. Oh no, I forgot the scope grass. There we go. Okay. Uh, what do we want to initialize? See, this, is, this, is, this is where like templates become tricky. What do I initialize my template type to if it's a template? I can't put a number because what if they pass in the string? Things get confused, right? So I don't know. But what I do want to switch this to is let's make let's make two make let's make uh let's make two things that data can contain. Or the container could contain. One of them is going to be dynamic and one of them is static. Just so we can practice some dynamic stuff too, okay? So we're going to call this data too. Okay, and that actually gives you something for the constructor to do, which is to allocate that. So I can say data2 gets new t, right? We don't, you know, if, if we were allocated like an integer, we would say like data2 gets like new int, right? Or if it was an array, then, you know, we would do an array. But because we are dynamically allocating something that is a template, we don't, Put in the, the, the actual type here like int, we just put the t, right? So I'm glad I did that because you can see templates with dynamic memory allocation. While we're at it, let's go ahead and make a destructor. So here, let's do that one in here. Just again, I want you so that you don't always have to do them outside. So we'll do this one inside. Uh, it's just literally going to be delete data too. Okay? We could set it later to null. But uh, it's not particularly required because it's, it's just running out of scope, so it doesn't really need it. And I'm just going to keep it in one line to not butter it. But yeah, that's how you would do that. Or again, you would just literally write the same thing as this, but replace this with a curly brace or uh, tilde. I guess that's, that's the name of this, tilde. And then just write delete in there if it was doing it outside. But yeah, okay. Let's do uh, get data now. As you can see, there's a lot of template keyword being used. Very cool. Uh, void container t get data. This one doesn't have a parameter. It's just a return. Oh wait, if it's, no, if it's. Oh wait, no, no, it's not void. It must be return type t, right? Yeah. Okay. And then this one is just literally going to be return data. Uh, now that we have a second thing, we might want to here. I know. Just so we don't have to write two more functions for that one, we can uh, we can make that one public, whatever. Okay, just so that uh, we don't have to write another get data function. Or should we write another one? Yeah, why not? No, no, let's leave it like that. Let's leave it like that. Because I do maybe want to modify this later, so that uh, this is a different type as this. So. Yeah, we'll leave it like that. It'll be less things to change around. So let's just make sure this works. You know, good strategy when coding is just don't try to do everything at once. You know, test tiny pieces at once. You need to test things like that. So let's just make an object. So uh, container of integer. We're gonna call this a, and uh, it's had a default constructor. So now if I want to insert something to it, I can say a dot set data 22 I can print it out afterwards so I can say a dot get data that'll print it out and I can go ahead and also play with the dynamic pointer so I can say a dot uh, data 2 that's a pointer so I can dereference it uh, or I can just use the arrows right 
Uh, or do I need to use arrows here? No, no, no. I think I'm okay with this. Yeah, that's fine. And then uh, maybe set this to have 44, and then see how that. Okay. One more thing. Let's just add some end lines there. Maybe, you know, what would be nice to add to this is let's add one more function called print. That'll come in useful when we do the list version of this. And then let's just add it in here. And what this function is going to do is we're just going to basically print out the, contain the containers. So I'm going to even make it nice. Data. And then uh, uh, just call it data. And line. Here. Data two. Okay. So now we don't need to do this stuff. Uh, for, for, for this one, we'll test that with the print. Okay. So, all right. Let's do this. Uh, Let's test it and see how it goes okay so we can see that it ran it and that we do indeed have a 22 in there that we get it from that and we can see when we print that we can see that there is indeed the 22 uh, we did screw that up because we are not dereferencing it so I forgot to dereference it but uh, other than that it should be okay so there we go okay so 44 so this is all good now but, um, you know, basically, not very exciting to just do with an integer. So let's just go ahead and try to change this to, uh, I don't know, a string and see what happens. The string's going to get all weird with the number, so it's probably going to give us errors, right? So with the string, it's, it's going to be like, yo, this doesn't work, but let's run it and get the errors. Uh, so here, here, let's just run it with this one. Okay, let's look at the errors here. So the error says, cannot convert int into a string. So yeah, I can't convert this into, see, it's like, I like it. It's nice, the, the terminal does give us some nice errors. It's like int with a little like pseudo looking arrow there, pointing to the 22. So, uh, and it says void container, you know, basic string set D. So yes, this will not work because these not have to be strings if they if wanted them to work. And then, of course, this would work fine now. Okay, so just something to keep track of that if you are using templates, people are going to be passing weird things there. That's going to break them probably. It's a fact of life. But at least they'll get the errors at compile time and not at runtime. So they'll know something's wrong before they actually go and try to release code to the world. Okay, so... Uh, Again, not very exciting. So let's try and change so that these two different types are different. So maybe this is an integer and this is a string. So let's make this more complicated by adding in a second template. We're going to call W and that's going to be stored here. Okay. So other than that, um, what do I got to change? Oh yeah. So now I got to have to change all of these to include the second one probably. So this is gonna have to be class W and then these are gonna have to be T comma W. So let's understand why this is the case, okay? This is again where templates start to get weird. So with, with a template, you know, it's, it's nice in practice, but in, in, in reality it's nice in theory, but in, in practice it can get messy. But you, everybody uses them though. All your libraries are probably templated. What happens is now that because this class contains two types, even if you're not modifying, like let's think about set data. Set data is not even touching the other, the, the pointer. It's not touching it at all. There's nothing affecting it. However, C++ will yell at you unless you include both template types here and here, even though you're not touching them at all. So already it's a little bit of a downside, but you just kind of, you know, you live with it. So we're gonna have to do that for all of these. 
Like, I understand why, you know, don't get me wrong, like, I understand some, like, people writing compilers why they did this, but it's still not, you know, it's still kind of like, why, kind of thing, okay? So, yeah, fact of life. All right, so now that we've done that, the class is good to go, but the declarations, of course, are not enough now, because now we need to define what the two template types are. So let's just say that one of them is going to be a string, and the other one's going to be an integer, okay? Oh, I know what we're going to do next. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. So, yeah. All right, so now, uh, this is fine as it is now, except for this. Well, no, this one's uh, now an integer, so we got to switch this back to being an integer. But uh, other than that, if we run it, um, oh, well, I guess we do, we do have an error. Let's see. Uh, error, can I convert line 22? That on the, Oh, yeah, okay. So uh, for the declaration, the constructor here, we are making, you, you know, this is like saying int gets new string, or sorry, string, yeah, int gets new string, right? Because data2 is a pointer of the w template type, which we're currently defining as an integer. So this is an integer pointer. However, here we're saying data2, which is an integer pointer, gets new, and it's storing a t, which is actually a string. So we're, we're trying to make an integer pointer point to a string, we know that doesn't work unless we do some nastiness with interpret cast or compile with that permissive flag on, which I wonder if it tells me here, like recompile with that permissive to work. Uh, it doesn't, but I do believe if I did this, it's really bad. Uh, nah, it was still getting an error of that one. Okay, that's nice. But yeah, basically that's what's happening here. So what we really need to do is we need to switch it to W there. Okay? Uh, it's still on the line, but I think we should be good to go now. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, as you can see now, I mean, the output looks the same, but that's because this is like 22. But if we said like, you know, high in here, then it's easier to see that one of them is a number and the other one is an integer. Okay, very cool. The next thing I want to try to do is, okay, what if we go in like inception style? Uh, what if we want to have W, which is a pointer, this template, we can be whatever we want, right? Int, strings, floats. What if we also make it a container pointer? Can we do that? And the answer is, yes, you can. At least with the pointer, you can. I don't know if you can with the uh, with the non-pointer because that's going to tell. It's going to yell at you the stuff is recursive and whatnot. But we'll try it later. But let's try the pointer because I know that one should work. So let's go ahead and do a container. Actually. Let's leave the code that we have, at least the declaration of this. Now nah, let's leave it all. Maybe just get rid of the C out so we don't clutter our, our terminal. But other than that, let's leave everything as it is now. Why does that underline? What's that complaining about now? Did I delete something? I must have deleted something when I was messing things. Oh yeah, I, I totally deleted something uh, in here. Okay, I have no idea what I deleted, but uh, whatever. Okay, uh, rewatch the video if you want to see what happened there, because I did not see it. But Control C saved the day. Okay, so uh, like I said, I'm just going to comment out here the C out statement. Oh, I know what. Oh no, no, it's not that. I was going to say something else, but no. Okay, so I'll leave it like that. Maybe also get rid of this print for now, just so we don't clutter the terminal. Okay, cool. So now we can actually write code here. So let's make another container. In this container, I don't know, uh, let's do a float, we haven't done, oh, let's do a car. Let's do a car for the first one. And for the second one, for the second one, let's make another container. Now, if you just do it like this, it's not going to like it, uh, but I'll, I'll show you how to fix it. And let's just call this uh, Inception, okay? So what I'm saying is I want to make my little container class, which contains, you know, a, a, a type of two types, one of them being a normal one and the other one being a dynamic. I'm saying the first one should be car, but the dynamic one should be a class of itself, a reference to itself, essentially, or not to itself, but at least to the same type. But of course, you see that this doesn't work. And if you try to compile it on the terminal so we can see a better error, it's pretty nice about explaining to you what's wrong with this. <laughs> so it says, type value mismatch of argument two, 
So that's the second the second one, the T and the W, this is W argument two. In template parameter list of template class T, class W. So it's saying that this is not working out. Expected a type got container. So this is like, you know, mom, I want to have Iron Man at home. And Iron Man at home is like tin can, you know. It was expecting something else, but instead got something that was not as cool. What you need to do is because you are declaring a container or a class that's templated, then anytime you do that, remember what you got to do. You got to put in the types of what it contains. So what I have to do here is actually put another set of greater than or less than uh, symbols and then put that container in here. So maybe like string and int. Now it's happy. It makes sense, but still, if you look at this, especially if I remove all the spacing that I put to make it nicer, if I just like crush it together, it starts to get a little scary on the syntax. Like, especially this stuff. Like, oh, what is this? Like, C out, C in, something? So that's why I like to space it. it makes it nicer to read. You're not required. But uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's template and inception, basically, okay? So now that I've done that, of course it compiles, so therefore it must work, right? So, not really gonna do much right now, but what I can do is I can actually put in the one that I have up here in there. Uh, I can do that by saying uh, inception dot data to dereference that. Actually, well, I can do either a copy of it, which I don't know if that's going to work. Let's try it. Otherwise, I can just copy, uh, I can just change the pointer to point. But if I do that, actually, that's going to crash because the destructor is going to try to be allocated and it's going to crash, right? You all see why? Because, like, when the destructor runs for, for this one, it's going to call delete. It's going to be a shallow copy, essentially. And when it does the delete, the second time the destructor runs for the other container, it's going to try to delete something that's already deleted. It's going to crash. It's not going to work out. So that's why we need to do a deep copy. So, uh, which I don't know if it'll work. I think we need to overload the copy constructor for that, but whatever. We can come out of the destructor. So, uh, yeah, let's do, uh, what is it called, just A? So let's see if that will run. And furthermore, let's see if it sec faults. In fact, let's run on the terminal. I think it's gonna sec fault. Yep, sec faulted. Double free detected in tcache2. Double free, that's basically what I'm telling you. So just for now, I'm going to comment that out, but I am gonna fix that in a minute. Uh, so where's my destructor? Let's just comment the delete out. Uh, it's gonna yell at me if I don't. Uh... Here, let's just comment out the entire destructor. Now it's not going to yell at me. But of course, you would have a memory leak if you uh, if you checked the bal grind and you didn't have that second one. So what's happening is it's making a shallow copy essentially. So uh, I need to add a copy constructor to this. So let's do that. Actually, this is a good time to do that because I haven't done that yet, and it's a good thing to do. So copy constructor. Uh, oh, it's been a while. <laughs> this will be even funner with templates. You do a constructor, but as the parameter of the constructor is going to be yet another uh, uh, object of the same type. So like if this is class A, the parameter would be class A as well. So like just to give you a very, very basic example of that, if we have a class A, and you're doing a copy constructor for this, it would be like A, A, like that. Okay, and that would be your copy constructor for that class. You, Copy constructor requires to have one parameter inside of it. Why is that yelling at me though? Um, let's figure out where that's yelling at me. Probably a, oh yeah, sure, yeah, yeah. Copy constructor does make you put the word const in it, I think. This is also gonna make me put the ampersand. Okay, fine, fine, fine. Yep, that, that fixed that error. Let's just comment this out for a second. I wonder if that's something that like the newer C++, yes, it's crashing. I know it's crashing because I haven't added the constructor yet. But 
I wonder if that's... I, I, I don't remember if I had to do that in the past, but maybe I did, and again, because I haven't coded it in a while. But yes, that's your most basic example of a copy constructor. You used to do deep copy, and it should be used, and it should be used whenever you are you have dynamic variables in your class, aka pointers. Pointers and deletes in your destructor. Okay? Uh, it's part of what is known actually as the rule of three. So we all know about the rule of two. There's always two, a master and an apprentice, right? Well, this is rule of three. Rule of three is a idea that if you have a, if you require a destructor, then that means that you should also put in a copy constructor and a, uh, shoot, what's the third one? Assignment operator overloading. Yes, I think that's it. Assignment operator and copy constructor. Maybe. Shoot. Damn. Rule of 3C++. Let me make sure that that's actually assignment operator. Uh, destructor, copy, co yeah, copy assignment operator. There we go. Okay, so, so I was I was correct. There's the link on, on, on uh, Wikipedia for that. Uh, I hope I don't have to up... Technically, I should follow that and do the three of them, but that's going to take longer. But yeah, okay. So anyways, um, if we go in here and uh, finish the copy constructor for the container class, then we can avoid that issue. So unless it makes me do also the assignment operator one. Okay, so we already got yelled at one, so we won't get yelled again for not writing the word constant there and the parameter there. And just put in here something easy to remember, so like old if you want, so the old one that you're copying to the new one or whatever, uh, or temp. And so what you gotta do in here is basically, this is running when you're making the copy, so you, you probably want to rerun whatever you do in your normal constructor for the new one. Meaning that uh, uh, we have uh, where, where that data two gets new w. That's basically what you're gonna put in here. Uh, oh, here, here. You know, let's uh, let's do this outside of the class, just so we can because it makes it nicer too and not as big. Uh, by the way, you don't need to put the parameter names or argument names on the. Uh, on the class itself, but if you do, then you should be consistent about those. Old. Okay, and now, um, whatever. I don't trust the VBS code to be correct. In, oh, this is why. Oops. Okay, so we are saying container here. T comma W scope uh, scope is an operator. There we go. Okay, now it's working. Copy constructor. Okay, so I'm going to dynamically allocate data two, and then I'm going to. I think that. Do I try dynamically allocate it? I think so in the copy constructor, but maybe for the assignment operator, we won't dynamically allocate it. Yeah, okay. And then make sure we, we deep copy it by saying uh, old.data2, the contents of that are going to be copied over to what is the new one, which is this, which we don't need to put to this, but I like to put it to make it clear. And then also dereference that. Okay. So that is a good copy constructor right there because it's going to do a deep copy and there's not going to be any issues because normally what the copy constructor is doing, the default one per se, is it's taking data2 and it's assigning old.data2. As you can see, all that line of code is doing is it's copying pointers, which is a shallow copy, which is bad, right? Well, 
not always bad, but more than likely bad. So what we're now doing is we're making a deep copy, which is good usually. Okay. Uh, still, I think we're going to have to do the assignment operator to fix this, but uh, let's just see. Yeah, we're going to have to do also the assignment operator. Damn. Okay. Uh, but let's change the code really fast to... Can we change the code really fast to avoid not having to do that? Mm. Maybe if I put in here A, if that is valid code, I don't know if that's going to work. No, that doesn't work. Okay, that's fine. Let us just... Uh, oops, what would we do? Okay, let us just go ahead and also throw in here an assignment operator uh, overload to fix that one. So... There's two ways we can do that. We can do that with a friend function, but we could also do it just as a member function because both types are the same class. So no need to uh, have friends involved. So that one is, oh gosh, that, that's something I haven't coded in a while, especially because I had to, you guys watched the video. Uh, I believe that's the operator. And it should also return the same type so that is going to return container. Operator like that. And then here, const container ampersand. Please feel free to correct me on this one because uh, it's been a while. Let's just make it inline here to make our life easier. So if we do that, and then I'll be copy over the copy constructor stuff. Uh, where's my copy constructor? Oh, here we go. That one we don't need to dynamically allocate because we assume that it's already existing. So, I mean, I, and you know what I can do is I can check if it's null. And if it is, then maybe dynamically allocate it as a safety. Maybe that's something that Clang would make you do. So if old uh, or if Oh, snap, that feels backwards. Oh gosh, is that backwards on this one? Yeah, that's backwards on this one. Ooh, nobody said anything on chat. Shame on you guys for that. Well, shame on me too for doing that, but... <laughs> you should copy from the old to the new. So, yeah, big big joke there, but okay. Uh, you know, copy to the new one. The old one. Okay, and maybe I'll do like an extra check here. Since I'm not dynamically allocating, I'm just gonna be like, if data2 is not equal to null, uh, you know, or if it is, actually, you know what I'll do is this. If it is equal to null, then actually allocate it. So to new uh, w. Okay, let's make sure that's what I'm doing down there too. Data2 gets new w, yeah. Yeah, okay. Just as a, this is literally like unnecessary, but I feel safer that way. Okay. I think that's, you know, if I remember my syntax correctly, which I don't apparently, then I should, oh, I called it right, that's why. So I'm saying like right and left, basically. Um, and also this is a deep copy, so I need asterisks in both of those. And also, did I do that in that one too? No. So, asterisk. Okay, it worked, and it did not sec fault. So I have successfully done this. I do get a warning though. What's the warning set? An instantiation of container TW required from here, no return statement in function returning non void. What function is this? Uh, 65. 
or 26. Ah, yes, true. Simon operator, right? You could technically have a line that says something like this. A equals B equals C, right? And so this part should assign C to B, but also return the value of, of B, I suppose, into A. So I can fix that by just saying, well, yeah, hopefully you guys did this when you did your Simon operator for loading, but it's something like return and then uh, I guess return this. That should be good to go. This pointer. Do I want a reference or a copy though? Hmm. Do I want a reference or a copy? So do I want, do I want this or I want to dereference this? Yeah. I'm gonna go with the I'm gonna go with the asterisk version. Nope, that is oh, oh. is that my coin? Well, it works, and probably the warning goes away. But I'm not super confident that that's okay. So we can we can check it really fast by. Uh, by just doing something like this. Let's say C gets B gets A. And if that crashes, then that means that it should not have the asterisk. And if it doesn't crash, then we're okay. Okay, didn't crash. I think we're okay. Let's just check with Valgrind. No errors. Okay, cool. So everything is fine then. A big, a big relief for me right now because like I was not sure that would work. So, okay, cool. Okay, I'll leave that in in case you want to play with it on your own time later since I will be uploading this after today's class. So, uh, yeah, so this is not just good for templates, but now you can see actually in action, copy constructor, well, actually assignment operator. How would I call the copy constructor more explicitly would be if I actually did the following here. Uh, I can... Uh, I can make another one of these objects. I'll call this one D. And then I can actually say A like that. So what I'm doing is I'm making an object and I'm filling it with the contents of A, but as a deep cop. Run that and the code should work. But yeah, so that's what you're, that's the copy constructor really in action. And if you're passing things by value to a function, then you do better have a copy constructor and an assignment operator in there overload because uh, otherwise you might have a shallow copy when you're passing the value and bad things will happen when it goes out of scope at the end of the function you will crash I've seen tons of people in 302 run into those issues this stuff is intense like today but let's make it more intense let's go let's go hardcore uh, let's start out by uh, we already showed you how to do a container within the container. Uh, I said I was going to try also to do one where the the thing is not dynamic. I think it should work, but I'm not sure. So let's just try it. So I'm going to say that in this case it's going to be this one. So string end and actually let's, let's make them both. And the reason I'm using string end is because I already have a couple of objects made for those. So it's going to be like deeper in the inception. Well, it didn't give us an immediate warning. Um, so maybe we are okay. Yeah, we're okay, okay. Uh, I thought we were gonna get into some like circular definition or something, but I guess it's fine. Because like, when we make this container, we know exactly what it is. I could change this to make a deeper container. So I need, I think I'm good on the less than the rate of the time. So you can see how this can go hardcore, like container within container within container, and you gotta keep track of all this less than or greater than signs. So it can get pretty nasty, pretty nasty. Okay, uh, let's let's save this as it is for now into one iteration, because uh, it's gonna start to get bigger and I want you to be able to play around with all versions of the code. Okay, that's 16. So now let's actually do what I was saying earlier, which is let's try to make a list of these containers uh, that that can basically just, you know, just make an array of them essentially. Uh, and then we'll do something else with it, okay? So 
Actually, you know, before we do that, sorry, I keep changing my mind. Let's do inheritance because inheritance and templates does get nasty. So I think because I mean, the list is cool, but it's not going to be particularly weird because it will just be something like template class, you know, x y, and then you do something like class list. And then if you want to make an array of those containers here, then you can simply say something like, oh, sorry, template. You can say like, uh, uh, I don't know, let's just make it a fixed size for now. So we'll just call it A for array, size 10. And then the type of this is going to be a container type. And we're going to pass in the, the two parameters, which I'm just, I decided to change the name just for fun to make it clear that the names don't really matter much. Uh, and then we just do that. And then, uh, that's it, I think. But why is that underlining it? Uh, we do have an issue, apparently. Template class to class. Oh, yeah, sorry. You have to write the word class after each one. Oh, we have more issues. Oh, well, big issue here is <laughs> you have to uh, you have to declare your you know the class name. See, I, I came from Python yesterday. In Python, you can do that. You can actually like reference things before they appear, and it's nasty. Uh, but uh, here, we actually need to make sure we put that after the we declare the container class, at least the actual core of it. Not particularly the, the definition of the functions if we don't use them, but at least the actual like declaration of that. So if I do that now, it's not going to yell at me for that reason. It'll yell at me for other things, but uh, those are smaller cases, such as semicolons. So there we go. So now, you know, it's just a list of containers. Nothing really impressive about that. So, you know, I'd rather move into inheritance. So inheritance. So let's make our container 2.0, basically, class. So what we're trying to do is container two. Well, we can't really say 2.0, so we'll say v2. How about that? Like that, container v2. Container v2 is an updated container, so we are going to be inherited from that. So we are gonna say class container inherits publicly from container. And then, uh, you know, we're going to augment it with some other things in there. But, uh, the syntax is going to get crazy, probably. So, oh, and by the way, suppose that in the in the list here you wanted to keep two separate lists that contain two separate types of this container. You can do that. You know, you can do something like, let's just say this is a T W and X Y. So, like, this container contains different types in this container. All you got to do for that is uh, list the other ones here, like that. And then you this should work over there. So yeah, pretty neat. Just just a nice little feature of that. It might be obvious to you already, but in case it isn't, just showing it. This is the one that's scary. So let's just see if this, this is not compiled, or if I have to put some flags here for this. I, I do think that I'm going to have to put some stuff in here, like TW. But let's try it without and see if it gives me an error. So, yes, it is giving me an error. Is it that error that I'm thinking about? Yep. Yeah, expected class name before the curly brace. So it says it's, there's something that I should have shown here before that, which is literally the S, to put TW. And then uh, let's try it again and see where we get to now. Redeclaration of container. Oh, yeah, that's just a variable naming convention. Let's just say this is B. There are two separate lists, so. Okay, there we go. So, you know, it's not looking too bad, but uh, still, it's not looking too bad because we kind of built it from the ground up. But if I just said like, you know, go ahead and make this, it's not as intuitive. So hopefully, you know, that's what I'm talking about. like. The template stuff can get pretty weird uh, to, to work with. So, container 2.0, what do we want to do with that? 
Hmm. I don't know. Let's just add another variable in it. So can store a. Uh, can store like two containers in one. So let's just make it public. Container and that container is of a different type. So we'll say class X and class. Or actually, you know what? It can it can store a list in addition to a container. Yeah, let's do, let's go with that. Which means we're gonna have to just bring this up here. So now it can actually store uh, a list of containers which we are going to call, uh, oh man, oh God, this, this, this is where it starts to get like messy. So this list has to have four variables in here, which are going to be T, W, X, and Y. <laughs> and then uh, now we can actually have that list of containers. We're going to call that just L for list. Uh, and those are in relation to these. And then in addition to that, we have the normal containers from this class, which are using T and W. But if you wanted these to be independent from these, then you have to have two more variables in there. So like maybe uh, U and V. If you wanted these guys here from the inherited ones to be different than the four here. Now, if you want them to match, then just make sure they match with the right one. So yeah, have fun writing a function for this class now. Uh, yeah, like let's just write a random function that like just tries to print this out. Um, no, let's not do that. Let's just write a random foo function, and let's just try to see what that foo function would look like outside. Just avoid a, a simple. Oh, well, we'll do it with one type returns. Like no, let's not even do that. Just void foo. Okay, that would literally have to be uh, all the stuff here. And then type in the return type, the class name, container v2, all of those fun, fun types, u, v, w, x, y, colons, foo, please send help. And then if we want to create an object and call that function in main, we're going to do container v2. Um, let's just pick random things for each one. We're going to run out of things to pick probably. Uh, double car. Let's do a container. Why not? Hands. and then uh, uh, we run out of things to do here at this point yeah let's do a list oh gosh uh, list has stuff in it too right we'll just do int maybe another int int and string okay there's no way I'm going to get this right the first time uh, scary stuff. It's the name of the variable. Uh, is it not called list? I did call it list, didn't I? Well, I can say whatever. The point is, let's just try to compile that and see what's up. Oh, uh, very cool. Wrong number of template arguments. Five should be six. <laughs> okay, I guess I need one more. Uh, and All right, let's keep working through the pain. Wrong number of templates, five should be six. I gotta put them all. Okay, class container v2 in function main. Line 63, oh, that's a different error. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, one. Okay, let's, let's, let's work through this slowly. Let's see if that builds. 
Okay, that doesn't build, so let's fix that error first. Okay, so... Oh, so it's a problem with the foo function. Yeah, we missed one. We mi What did we miss? Did we? It goes from U, V, D, T. Oh, we forgot T. Yo! Why did we put T in there like that? That's just so random. Oh, it's because it's a T. Yeah. Off of it. I should have gone off a better pull. Whatever. U, V, T, W, X, and Y. Okay. Maybe that fixes that issue. Yeah, okay, that fixes that issue. Even though it's underlined. VS Code's mean. You know, VS Code's great with Python, but with C++, it's giving me a headache. Okay, so now that we have that, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We don't have eight. We have less than that. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we got to get rid of two of these probably. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So maybe get rid of uh, car. There we go. Okay, compile. I have no idea what I can even store in this thing, but it's definitely a lot of stuff. But still, all I want to do is see if I can actually get the callback function. So scary stuff dot foo. All right, here we go. Please send help. Okay, yay, there we go. That's as far as I'm gonna get to that. This is too spooky of, of, of template over template. But that's actually, if you look at like, if you look at like how all the all the like the core libraries of C++ are made, like just even the basic math functions, like like ABS or well not ABS but like like most of the basic functions you use every day are all templated and it's literally like this stuff. It's just super scary, uh, and it's a like just try it. Just just go and download from like the documentation like the C++ like library for uh, IO stream or something, and like it is template mayhem. You will age like five years just by looking at it for five seconds. So yeah, templates can get really scary. They're awesome when you're keeping it simple, but as soon as you start building a template within the template within the template to be able to get things to work friendly with the other libraries and stuff like that, it just becomes really hard to keep track of. So uh, that's not to scare you. I mean, I'm, I haven't seen it, but I highly doubt that the assignment is going to be this tier of craziness. So. You should be fine. But anyways, even though it's uh, slightly early, I don't have anything else to say. So you're all welcome to ask any questions or otherwise we can just end it five minutes early, I guess. So you all been really quiet today, which is very worrisome. But I, I do see that we have people viewing it. So hopefully it's not a sign that you're all scared. Uh, show me proof of life, someone. But, okay. It's not that scary. That's good! If you're not scared by this, then you should be uh, not scared by anything at this point. So, very good. Either way, that's why we leave templates for Halloween, because they're very fitting for that time. Well, yeah, but the scary one is more of what you would see proper. Uh... I did go over the extra credit. I am going to post a separate video on that. So you can check that out as well. But yes. Uh, damn it. I forgot to record. So I, 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 don't worry. I just have to download the Twitch stream and then actually upload that to YouTube. I did that for earlier today too. And I did that on Tuesday for the... Or Monday for the other class. So not to worry. Uh, it won't be a problem. But yeah. Uh, yeah. Generics. In fact, generic type is a is a keyword that people will use also in C++. But things like Python, it's just kind of built in. You don't even think about it when you're coding. So, yeah. Uh, I do have a video from the last fall 2020 where I, I built a pseudo stack class that was templated. Or not stack, sorry. Uh, 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 vector. So if you, if, you, if you want more examples of templates, you can check that out. That's video 16 of the uh, previous year. Other than that, uh, that's the end of templates. At this point, 
I do believe that templates. Uh, well, yeah, you can use like is instance of and things like that, but everything is just happening behind the scenes in Python. You don't have to worry about it. So today marks the end of your C++ knowledge tour of 202. Uh, if I open up the syllabus, which I don't have open, but if I remember it correctly, this is it. You're done with what we teach you for C++. There's a lot more to learn, but you're just sort of expected to pick it up on your own over time. Uh, and it's not something that is particularly uh, critical. It's more of like niche, maybe, for something you're doing. So uh, having said that, you have all the tools you need now for... Uh, for coding in C++ for pretty much most of the things you need to do. So congratulations on getting to this stage. And for the rest of the semester, we are going to uh, be looking at concepts, things like recursion, uh, linked list, stacks and queues, those kind of things. But those are just concepts. We're not going to be learning anything new. The syntax with templates is literally the last thing that you learn. Uh, I'm looking here at future semesters and yeah, I mean, we're going to spend some quite a while on recursion and then move on to linked list. But recursion is a concept. There's no, there's no coding you're gonna learn for recursion. So yes, easy, peasy, lemon squeezy. Congratulations to all of you. You're all now C++ masters, right? Well, I don't know if masters is a perfect term, but you're definitely re ready for any class. 302, you could jump in 302 right now and you would be okay. The coding in that is, is, is you're not learning a single new thing in terms of syntax. It's all there now. So congrats. If you're here, at least now it's just all about the coding and not about the actual syntax. So this is like a this is like you just leveled up in like C plus in like in like CS program. You're no longer just learning programming. Now you're actually going to learn like actual pro, actual computer science. So congratulations to all of you. And uh, until next time, I will see you. So have fun with templates and. Uh, Stay posted. I will be sending an announcement with, with a survey, which is what you're going to have to do for the extra credit. And uh, I will also send a video link to, to the description of the extra credit. Okay? So, yeah. That's what you will do. But, uh, yeah. All right, then. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'm going to go now and download the video from Twitch so that I can upload it to YouTube. So, it might, might take me a couple of extra hours to... Maybe not extra hours, but it might take me a couple of few more minutes to to actually get all the videos uploaded because of all the shifting and stuff I have to do now. But cool. See you guys next time then. Have a good weekend.